Well, good morning and welcome to Hunt Hardy's and uh, this Saturday morning in Coach's Corner as we, uh, well, it, it's not quite as a bright and sunny uh, Saturday mornings that we've had the, for the first two, but uh, nonetheless, looks like the weather is uh, going to take a turn for the better for tomorrow, mid-70s, so uh, something I think for uh, people to look forward to. Uh, let's head back to last night, a game heard on K104 and KSBMRadio.com. The Bronco football team, uh, they not only faced two harbors last night, they had to deal with some weather as uh, the lightning came uh, through and delayed the game <laughs> for about 20 minutes or so. Uh, the pregame was shortened up a little bit, uh, trying to keep things going on, and the game started off uh, with the Broncos quickly moving down into two harbors territory before they turned the ball over on down. It didn't take long for the Agates to answer back as Ian Johnson went 66 yards on their first play from scrimmage. And the Agates went up 7 0. The Broncos came right back and tied it early in the second quarter on a seven yard run by Tyler Caulfield. White Omdahl added the extra point, and it was 7 7 about 45 seconds into the second quarter. Two Harbors would take the kickoff, go eight plays, uh, 61 yards, and then they added one more TD after a uh, muffed uh, a snap on the uh, punt deep in uh, their own territory. And uh, Two Harbors added another one right before the half with 23 seconds left, and they led 21 to 7 at the half. The Agates would add two touchdowns in the third quarter and also in the fourth quarter to defeat the Broncos by a final score of 49 to 7. The Broncos uh, did move the ball very well. Offensively, they had 165 yards rushing, they had 65 more through the air. However, it was two harbors that uh, showed their ground game 454 yards rushing and 41 attempts as they did have touchdowns run, runs of 66, 68, and 72 uh, in the ball game, and it just uh, that was the difference. The Broncos hit the road next Friday to face the uh, former Bronco, Wayne Roberts, and his Evel with Gilbert Golden Bears who look like they're headed to 3-0 on the season, and I say headed towards because just moments ago their game resumed this morning. They were playing Virginia last night when it was uh, suspended due to lightning with the score 21 to nothing with 5.36 rem uh, remaining in the second quarter. So they got a little bit better than a half to play this morning. And uh, again, that game, uh, Evelyn Gilbert leading by a score of 21 to nothing. The Little Fort Big Falls Vikings uh, also had to deal with a lightning delay down at uh, John Thompson Field in their game last night against the Northwoods Grizzlies. Northwoods broke the game open early. They led 49 to nothing at half and won either by a spinal score of 57 to 8 or 56 to 8. I'm getting uh, conflicting stories on that, so I, w I won't give you an official official score, but uh, that's what I had for my numbers. I had 57 to 8. I saw 56 to 8 uh, online, so uh, that one of those is going to be the final score. Uh, elsewhere in the uh, High school football last night. Let's just run down some scores. Barnum 42, Masabi East 22. Cloquet had a rally to defeat Duluth Enfield 36 28. Duluth East loses to Princeton 32 21. Grand Rapids, after losing to Greenway and Nashua Kiwak last week, they bounced back. Shuttle Proctor in Proctor by a final score of 29 0. Aiken and Crosby, a big battle there. Aiken comes away with a 20 to 14 win. I said last week when the Broncos played uh, Hibbing that Hibbing was going to be facing Hermantown this week. It was going to be a very interesting game, and wow, what a score. 60 to 42 last night. That's a football score now, folks. 60 to 42 in favor of Hermantown. Hermantown scored three touchdowns, scored 24 points, excuse me, in the fourth quarter, uh, as that one was still in doubt at the start of the fourth quarter. Chisholm 12 to 6 over East Central in three overtimes. Hinkley uh, shuts out near River 20 to nothing. McGregor 18 to 10 over Carlton. Moose Lake, Willow River, and Esco, uh, just a battle between two uh, town, two schools that really don't like each other. Moose Lake, Willow River wins by three points, 36-33. Uh, Floodwood loses to Southridge, 28-14. Mountain Iron Buell, 78-8 over Onania. Ely, 40-6 over Silver Bay. Cromwell defeats Renshaw, 56-14. Kellier Northholm defeats Northeast Range just by a final score of 8 to nothing. Big Forks, 26-18, better than Lake of the Woods. Uh, St. Cloud Tech down from Bemidji, 38-24. And uh, the other score, uh, Rogers loses their first game of the season. Mark Friends, uh, a very good program down there. They lose to St. Michael Elberville last night by a score of 23-12. to The Twins uh, got shut out last night uh, in the first game of the three-game series in New York as they faced the Mets. And the Twins only managed three hits as they lose by a final score of 3 to nothing. The two teams face off again tonight with the first pitch at 6-10. Pre-game starting at 5:25 on K104. The Minnesota Lynx improved to 27 and 6 on the season last night with an 82-75 win over Indiana. 
The Lynx had four players in double figures as Maya Moore led the way with 15 points. Minnesota has clinched the number one seed for the playoffs. They'll get a bye through the first round that start this coming week and they wrap up their regular season tonight as they look to set a franchise record of 28 wins in a season as they host Atlanta at 7 p.m. What's going on around the area today? Well, the uh, Rainy River Volleyball team takes their 7-4 overall record, 2-1 in the Northern Division. They travel down to Grand Rapids to face Itasca, who is 6-6 six six on the season, 3-0 in the Northern Division, and that match is set to go at noon in Grand Rapids. The International Falls Girls Swimming and Diving Team, they are taking part in the Hibbing Invitational today. The diving gets started in about five minutes or so at 9.15. The swimming begins at 1 o'clock, and if you have the Meet Mobile app, uh, you'll be able to follow along there, and I'll be trying to keep everybody up to date on Facebook as well. The Low Fort Big Falls Vikings volleyball team, they're down in Crosby Arrington for a day-long tournament that began uh, at 9 a.m. And the Rainy River baseball team uh, has a couple of fall scrimmages out in western Minnesota as they travel to Crookston for a 2 o'clock and a 4.30 matchups against Crookston and Northland Community College. The World Cup of Hockey gets started today. Uh, if you want to get your hockey fix a little earlier before the snow flies, uh, this would be the time to uh, do it. Team USA meets on Team Europe at uh, 2.30 today. That game's on ESPN2 if you're interested. And the Czech Republic takes on Canada tonight. That game's on ESPN News. So uh, that tournament continues through Thursday. Team USA also plays on Tuesday against Canada and the Czech Republic on Thursday. And of course, all those games available on the ESPN family. So if you're interested, in the hockey, uh, you, you've got that option. Of course, it is uh, Saturday. That means college football uh, kind of takes the forefront. The Minnesota Gophers are off this week uh, before traveling to Colorado uh, State next week. Some big matchups between top 25 teams today that have got my uh, interest. Florida State and Louisville, that's probably the big one. That one goes off at 11 a.m. Alabama at Mississippi at 2.30 this afternoon. Ohio State and Oklahoma didn't realize this. The two teams that have the most time spent at number one overall, Ohio State and Oklahoma, they face off at 6.30 tonight. Michigan State and Notre Dame, they play every year, like the second or third week of the season. They also play at 6.30 tonight. That'd be very interesting. Probably the game of most interest to me, though, today is North Dakota State, uh, the five-time defending FCS uh, champions. They travel to Iowa out of the Big Ten at 11 a.m. That game is definitely going to be on my radar. Closer to home, UMD is at St. Uh, is at Concordia St. Paul, excuse me, at 6 o'clock. Gunnar Anderson and the St. John Johnnies, they open their MIAC schedule as they will be hosting St. Olaf at 1. North Dakota and South Dakota face off at 4 o'clock today. Bemidji State host Wayne State. Bemidji State got a big upset last week as they defeated Mankato and uh, they uh, are looking a little bit better. Of course, tomorrow, the Vikings and the Packers, uh, the uh, Sunday night game at 7.30, pregame at 6.30 on K104. The other games in the uh, North, uh, NFC North this week, Tennessee is at Detroit, and Philly is at Chicago on Monday night. We're going to take a break, and we're going to talk girls cross country coming up here in the morning. You're listening to Coach's Corner. Bye for parties on K104 and on KSBMA.com. Well, welcome back to Coach's Corner for our second segment. Joined by uh, a couple of members of the girls cross country team and head coach Paul Jelly, a veteran, gray haired, I called her in, during the break. Lexi Erickson joining me and uh, Avery Savone, and she's, she's pretty young still, just a sophomore, but she's a veteran of this. Maybe we'll get her to sing again this year. We'll, we'll see. She doesn't have her posse with her this time, but we'll see. It. Maybe she can get Lexi to sing with her. I don't know. Maybe Coach Jelly might join in for a little harmony in the background. Uh, <laughs> Paul says, no, that's not going to happen. Coach, uh, a couple of meets uh, already in, under your belts. Three of them, I guess, as I, I think about it now. Uh, kind of got the season started a little late because you guys had to, had to give up a meet due to budget cuts. And has it affected affected the team at all not having that first meet that I think it was supposed to be at Virginia? Oh, I don't think so. Uh, we're No, that that meet is, it's. I guess it's kind of important, but we were, uh, that gave us a little bit more time to get some work done on the track with repeat mile sessions. Uh, the kids love those. I was going to say, there's a bunch of smiles as you said, <laughs> said that, Coach. <laughs> so it might have helped us in the long run. Is it something, and of course, you know, I suppose a lot of people, including myself to a certain extent, think, well, cross country, they go out and run a 5K, so 
what do you do? You go to practice and you go out and you, you, you run a 5K every day to, to help them get into shape. Obviously, there's a lot more to it than just that. Oh, yeah, there's there's a lot more than just putting miles on. The speed is very important. Uh, our core strength is important, so we spend a lot of time doing our ab work every, every day. And, and then we uh, try to get some strides and build-ups in at the end of one run. There, there's a lot of stuff. Lexi can tell you that getting in the weight room is pretty important. Yeah, I would say, I would say uh, I, I was at practice yesterday and you were talking about the hills at Hebleth on Thursday, that, that you really don't have any hills to run. Uh, is that, I, I think about the, the section meet, because when you were talking about it yesterday and I was standing, I was thinking, okay, section meet, so I'm thinking about Cloquet, and I know Cloquet has one big hill on their golf course. Is it part of the course, though, when when you run at the sections, that big hill that's way over uh, on five, or does the, uh, does the, the uh, race not go out that far? Uh, there is no big hill. At, at Cloquet. Okay, for, during and the race. Cloquet course is very uh, friendly. It's for, pretty flat. There's the one hill, but it's it's nothing like running that up. So we don't even worry about that. Did, did, did you guys have to put in like extra long spikes or something to, to run up the hill or, or no? Lex? No, I just wear track spikes. Just, just wear the plain old track spikes. Avery, you, you, you didn't put on nothing extra to help run up the hills? No. Oh, just the normal cross-country spikes. There you go. So uh, they should be running in there, probably in just their running shoes. You're running on tar, a tar trail. So that, that that makes it a little more interesting. Coach was talking about the weight room. Lexi, is it something that you have added a lot into the into your uh, training over the summer uh, with the, with the time off from school and everything else? Was it something that you added in, or has the whole team been working on? Um, well. So, okay, again, here we go. I'll, I'll ask the question. You think about running, just just go out and run. How has the weightlifting made it easier for you to be better at running? What what does it do? To explain it to me so that I understand. Well, I don't know. I just think I'm stronger. I got a little bit more muscle and a little bit more endurance, and it just it helps to have that behind you for mental. Like it helps to have that and. To know that I can act, I can do it. I just need to run. Just need to run, and it obviously helps out. So let's talk about the first three meets so at Roseau, at War Road, at Eveleth. Uh, Lexi had a couple of firsts and a second in there. Uh, right, with those places, obviously things are going well. But are you running up to what you believe your capabilities need to be at this time of the season? I think I'm doing pretty well. I know I can do better, and uh, my time's unhappy with them right now. And, uh, Avery, how about you? Uh, how, how do you feel the first part of the season has gone for you? Uh, obviously, uh, Lexi sets the bar pretty high, but do you feel like like you're you're, you're staying close enough to her that we're, uh, it's something that you and the rest of the team ha ha have an opportunity to close that gap? Because I know Coach Jelly always talks about running in a pack, running in a pack, try to get that, and Lexi's out there, but are, are you and the rest of the girls trying to run in that pack to, uh, to keep the numbers down? Well, I think we definitely have a lot of work to do. Um, my time's been a little bit slower than last year, so hopefully I can change that. But we just have to try to stick together and get our times to be closer. Together so, so what does coach need for you to do? Do you got to, to get those times down? Does, does he need to like run you harder? Or you, you want to do some more? What, what, what are we called? Repeat miles? Is that what you call them? No repeat miles. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what is it? What is it? What, what, what drill at practice? What do you guys do at practice that you think uh, maybe you need to do more of to, to, to help yourself? Um, our longer runs, some people just to get them to run longer. Just keep on the Coach, uh, you got some meets coming up. You get to go to Bagley, and I, I guess I've driven past Bagley a few times. I would guess that's, that's pretty flat, I would guess. Uh, what are the meets coming up uh, on the horizon that are kind of uh, maybe those those marks in the season where you're kind of going, this is this is a big meet, this will tell us something. This is a big meet, this will tell us something. Well, definitely, Emelith on Thursday was a big one. That told us a lot about our section. And then uh, the next biggest meet that really will mean something will be the hitting meet. Uh, 
Well, swing is important too, but that's not going to tell us anything about where we sit here essentially. So. Well, I was giving Lexi grief the other day that Coach Jelly is always trying to hide you guys. You guys are always running out west. You guys go to Bagley. You go to Roseau. You don't want the rest of Section 7 to see it. But you had the chance to see everybody at Ellis. So who's out there in Section 7 that, that, that we're worried about? Who, who showed their face uh, on, on, on Thursday and said, hey, we're, we're contenders for the girls? And where do where do the falls sit the, in that mix? Well, you, Proctor definitely showed that they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. And Southridge put together a, a pretty good meet as well. Quite, uh, quite a distance back from from uh, Proctor, so they're, they'll be in there. And then you have Ely. They're uh, I don't know what they're feeding those kids in in Ely right now, but they've got a good football team, a, a great cross country team, and their girls are good. So they'll be tough. And all we want to do is continue to worry about trying to get better individually right now, setting goals before each meet and trying to attain those, and then move on and set new goals for the next meet. I, I, I heard you say something interesting while I, when I was at practice yesterday, just like for a couple of minutes, uh, people might think I was there forever, but uh, you, you said something that, that interested me very much because you were talking about the times compared to last year, and the, you, it, you almost were talking to the kids like they were a little disappointed where they finished on, on Thursday at Evelyn, and you were talking about go back and compare your times, and almost everybody improved their times and substantially. It, is it something... Is it a really a mental game sometimes to play in cross country with the kids? Because when you maybe don't see that number or that place that you want, it, it, it can be it can be a little uh, mentally tough. Mental toughness is the thing in cross country. Uh, ask Lexi if like if I could put myself in Lexi's shoes for one meet, Lexi. I would, I would step up to that line and I would look at the other competitors that I'm running against and I would know if I'm Lexi Erickson, I'm one of the top runners in class A or double A. It doesn't matter. And that belief right there, that confidence is going to do wonders for me heading into that 5K. And that's one thing that she definitely needs to, you just have to have that belief because I know I believe in you. And if she gets that, it gets late so I don't think there's a I don't think there's a runner in class A. I don't care if we're talking about Fox or Peterson. This girl has it. And it comes down to being mentally prepared and ready to run. Lexi uh well, first of all, I may, maybe want your response to that. I was going to go someplace else, but what, what, what do you think about those words from Coach Jelly? Does that does, you know that he's got that confidence in you? Does, it, does that make a, does that help when you get on the line, or is it something uh, something else that he's looking at? Well, I know they had this coming since I was in seventh grade, and before that, probably you guys accepted it, and you just run my race. You mentioned the Swain a couple moments ago uh, when we were talking about big races coming up. Obviously, that's one that you've checked off in your mind. Let's see why. What, what is it about the Swain that that makes it a, a race that you're looking forward to? And I think that's on October first, right? That's Saturday the first. We see all the runners that compete at the state meet, and they're they're good runners. It's a hard course, and those are the ones that I love. So I want to talk more about that. So you say you're going to see the runners that you're going to see at the state meet. So when you run at St. Olaf down at, uh, in Northfield and the Swain, are they similar courses? Is, is, it a, is it a good comparison to see the other kids because you're running a similar course or is it a really a different course and, and, and you maybe not or maybe aren't getting the true mark or the true test of where everybody's at? Well, I don't know because each course is a little different sure. so it kind of depends. I think the course is important because everyone has to go through it and the same matter is it's just whoever gets that line first. Avery, what meet are you looking forward to coming up? Uh, with, well, what's the one that uh, is kind of you've checked off and said I, this one's big? I like the Ely meet because the shoot's downhill so it's really, really nice at the end. Um, there's a lot of it makes it easy. You know, about the high plate coming up. What, what it always, you, you guys are keeping me on uh, on track on that pile plate because you guys keep changing it from Tuesday to Thursday to Tuesday. I know you don't have anything to do with that, but it, it, it is what it is. It's been moved. It, it's on Tuesday, October 11th, the only home meet of the year, and it comes right before IRC. So uh, again, uh, IRCs always seem to be in White Lakes, if I remember correctly. Yes. Similar course, 
right, for the Ohio Pike and for, for the IRCs at Hoyt Lakes. I've never been to the meet in, at Hoyt Lakes. Well, we have the one hill on at our home course, and uh, uh, Aurora Hoyt Lakes is probably a little more challenging than ours. There's a couple, a couple hills, but maybe it's pretty similar, I guess, when I think about it. So, yeah, they, they might be pretty close. Expectations, where are we going? What to... Uh, well, what can the, what what can this team do? I'll talk team, Avery. What what can this Bronco Girls cross country team do when it comes to sections October twenty seventh? I think it is not a quote case. Where is this team going to be? Give me a prediction. Second place, eighth place, fifth place. Give me a number because we're math people, me and you know, right? We're we're on a, we got a connection, right? So we got to talk the numbers. What what place are we talking? Give me a prediction. Well, I'm hoping the top five. Okay. Is it, a realistic goal, Lexi. You're shaking your head. Do you agree? Top five would be would be a great place for this team. Yeah. Yeah. Coach, agree with that? He wants bigger. Right? I'm not going to disagree, but you know, you always set your goals high. Uh, if we could be top five, I would be thrilled with that. That would be. I think that would be a really good showing. Coach, give me a couple other. Obviously, we've got two uh, two of the girls here. Give me a couple other girls. Uh, so everybody knows who's out there that, that's competing for the Bronco Varsity and uh, or, or even some JV girls because uh, the, the, maybe some up-and-comers that maybe aren't running Varsity now but will be running Varsity maybe towards the end of the season. Well, right now we have Gwyneth Shinners. She's uh, running pretty good. She's pushing Avery and Faith Black. She's uh, been there for a few years and she's a part of the team right now. We have Melissa Showquist who has some ability. It's just a matter of you know working harder in practices and and uh, having being ready to run on meet days and then we have uh, Rachel Anderson that's new to the team uh, she hasn't put a lot of miles on but you know you talk about a great kid that has good attitude uh, and that rubs off on the other girls and um, did I forget anyone? Grace and Grace Gilbert who's come back from uh, you know not running last year she's just been a pleasant personality and fun to have her back on the team. And then we have a little uh, eighth grader, Anna Windles, who she she might surprise some people here and might really help us as the season goes on. She's running junior high right now for a reason, to build up the confidence, and uh, I see some good things from her. She works hard, she battles, and she's running with confidence right now. She might, she might do some things for us as the season goes on. Cool. And Megan? Oh, yes, Megan Bush and Melody Rule. I can't forget about her either. So, yeah, we have some kids out there, some nice kids. Well, I appreciate uh, your guys' time this morning. Thank you for coming in. I know it's tough to get out of bed early on a Saturday morning, but I appreciate it. Head coach Paul Jelly, Lexi Erickson, and Avery Solon and joining me here. We'll take a break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk Bronco Volleyball. You're listening to Coach's Corner, live from Hardy's on K104 and online at KSDM Radio. Well, welcome back to Hardy's for our third segment, and uh, I'm joined by nearly the entire Bronco Vol. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm joined by Clara Palm of the Bronco Volleyball Team. Clara, you are awesome for uh, coming in early this morning and, uh, and joining me here. And uh, it's been a quite the start to, to the season for this team, uh, sitting at eight and two. And uh, I don't, I don't want to make. Things, I don't want to start things off wrong, but did, did you guys maybe feel like you let one slip away Thursday night against Virginia? Yes. Um, I'm still kind of in a depression about it. We talked about it, and we definitely slipped in the game. Well, and, uh, just to let everybody uh, know, in case you're not aware, the Broncos did take the first set to 25-19, if I remember right. I didn't go back and look up the score, but then the Broncos lost sets 2-3 and 4, 25-23, 25-23, 25-23. So they were really uh, anybody's uh, sets, uh, a lot of ties in those uh, in those sets. And, and we talked Claire after the match on Thursday night, and, and we kind of uh, one of the questions that I asked you was. What was the difference? And you just felt like maybe a, a point here or there or, or a little lack of confidence. You had a, a day and a half to, to reflect on it. Has something else shown the head? Did, did, did you see maybe something in the video or did Coach say something? Hey, I was watching the film and, and this maybe, this is something that if we do that, the, the, the match might turn out differently. Um, no, we haven't really found out a reason why. It's kind of a little bit of everything, I would say. And 
it'd be much nicer if we knew, like, if we had, if there's a concrete answer to why we lost the game. I think it was just a little bit of luck, a little bit on their side, um, a little bit of our errors, our own, too many of our own errors, I would say. To me, to me, when I, I'll say this, I'm, I'm sitting there watching the match on Thursday night, and of course I watch quite a bit of volleyball, and it seems like, I, I say basketball is a game of runs. Volleyball is a game of runs as well. It is, you, you know, you get the side out, so you get a point, and you serve twice, and all of a sudden it's a three-point swing, and it, it, that match just seemed to be the Broncos are in control, and all of a sudden Virginia would come back, and they'd run off four or five in a row, and then you guys would come back and run four or five in a row. And it really, in my mind, it just came down to, you know, if you were playing to 30 instead of 25, or if you'd only been playing to 20, the match could have been that different. Do you feel like the two teams, talent-wise, are, are that close? I mean, because I, you guys could be sitting 3-4, 2-3 in, in the section come the, the end. Do you, do you think with the two teams the way they are right now, that you guys are that close talent-wise? I, I think we're better than Virginia talent-wise. Um, I agree. We, it's just the way, kind of the luck of the draw. I don't think we didn't try hard enough. We didn't. Not, we worked hard enough to win. It was just maybe a little bit of skills, so polishing up our skills. Let's, let, let's talk about, and I, I don't want to get too much, much into this, but Lexi Aaron's 6'2", she looked about 6'7". With, with, talk about playing against somebody with that kind of height. Is, is, does it change how the team plays against a player like that when you know that she has has that kind of height and that kind of skill? Um, I don't think it should change how we play against her because we always set up the same way for a middle hit or whatever. But, I mean, it kind of does. You can, well, since there's always setting to her, you can see where she's going to hit. So I guess you can adjust to that and maybe cheat a little bit, but I don't, we shouldn't change our game based on one player because that's kind of what it was, one player. Let's talk about uh, a little bit more about your team. One thing that I think I've noticed about this year's team, and, and you can definitely disagree with me if, if you like, but it seems to me this Bronco team has the ability to scramble, to 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 gut out a point where uh, it looks like there is no chance in heaven that there is there is a way they're going to get the point, and you guys have a chance to even put it back over the net. This team has seemed to find a lot of times that they've been able to do that this year. Do you, do you see the same thing, or am I, or am I imagining? It? No, I agree with you, and I think that um, if we keep, if we continue to go after every single ball, that it, you can see more of those. We have a few plays like that in our Virginia game. Let's talk about those. maybe the other matches of the season so far. The only other match you guys have lost though was to Greenway in the tournament last Saturday. So you guys, like as I mentioned, sitting at eight and two, a, a great start to the season. Uh, talk, talk about maybe one match that maybe sticks out in your head that kind of is a highlight maybe so far through the first ten matches of the season for the Broncos because uh, there there have been there have been some exciting matches along the way. What do you think so? I don't want to say Virginia, but the first game against Virginia, I think it's one of the best we've played all year, all season. So if that, if it would have continued, if that could have been the other games, that would have been good. We we I, I, I've been uh, we've been talking you and I we've been talking about the jump serve, something you've added in, and and it's something that if you of course if you watch the Olympics uh, out there, uh, almost everybody jumps serve. Uh, at the high school level, it's not something that you do a lot, and we were talking about it during the break, and you said, there's really nothing to it. It's not that simple, is it? I mean, I don't know. I have a couple. It really depends on each person's personal strengths. And so if I'm not very tall, but while the jumping helps me get a little bit higher so that my serve can have a downward, have a downward angle, um, the toss is really important, too. Because if that's off, my service, I immediately know that. I just, I just, I just had a thought. Do you throw up, throw it up left-handed or right-handed? I throw I, it up left-handed, but okay. when I watch a lot of videos, this is how I learned pretty much is to watch a lot of videos. Almost everyone throws it right-handed. I can't. I tried, I can't. I, I, I actually asked my wife while we were watching the Olympics this summer, I said, why do they throw it with the why don't they throw it with their other hand and the hand that they like you do, why don't they do it that way? And 
she said, I, I just only can suspect that that's their dominant hand, so that's the hand they throw it up. But it would seem that if I was throwing the ball up with, I don't know, it, 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 it seems odd, but that's a, maybe a baseball player thing where you throw it with one hand and, and, and that type of thing. Why don't more volleyball players jump serve then if you if you make it sound so simple? Why don't more kids do it? I think a lot of people are scared too. Um, I I mean I miss a few serves, but I'm still learning. I just started working on it this summer, so I'm not. I don't know. I think if I would have been practicing it for a couple more years, I would have. I would, it would be a lot better serve. I don't know why a lot of, why other girls don't. I think people are intimidated by it and scared to do it, but it's not really that difficult, I don't think. All right, let's talk about what's coming up. A couple of home matches coming up this week. Tuesday, Lake of the Woods. What do you know about the Bears? Anything? Lots. Lots? Yeah. <laughs> I can probably name another team around. Um, how, how, do, how do you know so much, Claire? Where well, I used to live in Bedette, uh -huh. and I have lots of friends that live there. Okay, so they have a big middle. Um, her name is Marissa Johnson. Uh, she's red hair. <laughs> no, but she's a, she's a very strong hitter. Um, there, another hitter that they have is Megan Helen, and she's out. She's with her ACL. So, but yeah, I think we know a lot about Bada. I mean, we haven't seen them in any tournaments or anything like that, but pretty confident going into it. Let's talk about the other home match a little bit. The the, the battle with the uh, Little Fork Big Falls on uh, on Thursday. It, it I, I'm going to say that it's been contentious, friendly friendly contentiousness maybe between the two teams because there's that want to win, but I don't think we necessarily don't like the other team. It, talk about talk about the battle on Thursday. What it means maybe to the Broncos uh, to to play against Little Fork and, 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 and to get a win. I think it's extremely important for our team to get a win because we haven't, I played on varsity for this in my fourth year and for the last two years we haven't won against Little Fork and it's really important for me personally to win just because we've seen that team so many times. We know every girl that they have on their team. Like we've been, I've, we've gone to Little Fork. Yeah. It is what it is. It is very important. I, that, that's what I hear you saying. I, I, I agree. Uh, let's look forward. Let's go past this uh, coming week. What, uh, what do you see coming up uh, as some important matches for the team coming down the stretch? Anybody you're looking forward to playing? I know uh, you got the tournament uh, in Esco in, in October. Of course, we got Hibby. We've got Grand Rapids, uh, Chisholm. Uh, I'm going off the top of my head. And with Gilbert. Uh, Greenway again uh, at home uh, on the uh, same day as the Ohio Pike on October 11th. Those are job things I got to know. Who's out there that, that you're looking forward to playing? Um, I'm excited for the tournament at ESCO just because it's always interesting to see how different teams play. Because you play differently during a tournament. Because Okay, why? Why do you play differently? That's a great point. Why? Why? Because there's not, I mean, it's, it's not as formal. You don't get a formal 20 minute warm up. So it's pretty much. I don't know. And then you're playing all those different teams, like kind of right in a row. And you're playing only two out of. You're only playing two out of three. Does that change the atmosphere of it as well, or no? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's not very many games. No, but I mean, oh. just because you're not going to have a chance to play five, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. you, you got to, you know, you lose the first set, you're, you're, you're kind of, uh, 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 you know, you're, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you really have to battle back in the second game. You guys did that last week. I want to go back to last week because their third and fourth match, third and fourth matches, excuse me, last week uh, were games, uh, matches that you lost the first set to the team and then had to come back and win two and three to, to pull it out. But do you think that maybe gave the team a little confidence going forward? Yeah, I think so. I don't think we should have lost those first games. We definitely could have won them. But I think knowing that we can work, our team is very, we don't, if we lose one game, we're okay with battling back and winning the next game. I don't think that's a problem. We won't get too sad or too whatever. All right, Claire, you got to I'm going to give you the microphone. Give me something that I need to know about the Bronco volleyball team that I wouldn't even think of asking. What? What, what strange fact is there out there about this team that, you know, there's maybe, maybe there's a, a jokester on the team, the one that keeps everybody loose. What what out there, what, what has been special about the 2016 season that people out in the public don't know? Well, I think something special is that there's seven seniors and seven juniors, and that's no 10th graders, which is pretty, in our town, we don't usually have the teams, varsity teams of juniors and seniors. So I think that we're kind of an, we're elite, like, I don't know, because everyone has played 
no one's coming up from C team or something like that. Like we've all played JV, put in our time. So I like that. That is that is a, that is a great point. I agree. I, I I had not realized that there was not a sophomore uh, dressing. I, I had not picked up on that. And uh, I know there's uh, some sophomores that are out there on the JV team, and and, and that's something that they're getting their time in so that uh, they can uh, be a part of it next season. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of talent on JV too. There's a lot of good girls. So. Claire, I appreciate you coming in this morning. Uh, go home and, uh, and rest up and uh, get ready for the big two home matches. Uh, we had you guys had great fan support there on Thursday night against Virginia. Let's hope that continues. Thanks. Claire Palm joining me here this morning from the Bronco Volleyball team. We'll take a break. We'll come back and uh, wrap it up, of course, with the week that was and the week that's coming up. You're listening to Coach's Corner. Live on Welcome back to Coach's Corner. Live again here from Hardy's. want to thank my guests again uh, this morning. Uh, the um, Bronco girls cross country team, Lexi Erickson and Avery Simona, and the head coach Paul Jelly, and of course uh, Claire Palm, who uh, just uh, departed from us. We appreciate them coming in this morning. Uh, quick update, uh, in case you are wondering, I'm mean, getting updates on the Evelyn Gilbert Virginia game. They have gone into the fourth quarter already. The score remains 21 to nothing, although Evelyn Gilbert is driving. So uh, looks like Evelyn Gilbert will be 3 0 when the Broncos fa face off with them uh, next Friday night down at Evelyn. Uh, down in, uh, I can't remember. Why can I not remember? I tried this morning to remember the name of the court. Can't remember. Anyway, let's go back to the week that was. Let's head back to last Saturday. The Rainy River volleyball team was down in the Twin Cities for a tournament. They beat Vermillion in two sets. That's two out of three. No, they also beat uh, Nopa Ramsey, but then they lost to Fergus Falls in three and lost to Dakota County in two sets. Maddie Filippiak, who's been having a big season, she had 27 kills and eight blocks uh, along with the, uh, during the day. A.J. Horry had 70 set assists. The uh, Voyagers, uh, again, uh, had a match uh, on Wednesday, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Cassandra Moffitt also had 15 kills, three blocks, and three ace serves for Rainey last Saturday. The Bronco volleyball team, as we mentioned, was in Greenway last Saturday. They defeated Northeast Range 25-4, 25-17. Cassie Puller led the way with six kills. They then lost to Greenway 25-19, 25-22. Jenna Sullivan had four kills and two ace blocks. Then they matched up with Ely, uh, who they played also played on Monday. It took them three sets to do it, 22-25, 25-20, and 15-12 in the deciding third set. Uh, Lauren Radio, 22 digs out of the back row. And then they had to go three sets against Cherry, 19-25, 25-18, and 15-13 in the third. And Bianca Carlson, the uh, setter, she just had a huge match. Uh, 19 set assists, four kills, two way serves, seven digs. Uh, just doing it all there last Saturday. Also last Saturday, the Viking, uh, the LBF Viking football team, they were down in MIB. They lost by a final score of 54-6. to six. On Monday, the Bronco Cross Country team was out in War Road. Lexi Erickson, she took first place in the uh, girls. For the boys, John Common goes third, Joe Golowak fourth, Jake Erickson fifth, Bronco Laughlin seventh, and Hunter Wilson tenth. Uh, as the Broncos won that uh, meet with 29 points, Rosal was behind them at 45. A great uh, effort there by the boys on Monday. The Bronco volleyball team got to face Ely for the second time in three days, this time best out of five in the uh, Broncos. They had to go four sets to uh, take care of business. 25-22, 25-17, 23-25, and 25-17. Lauren Radio, 44 digs. Bianca Carlson, 24 set assists. But Jenna Anderson, uh, excuse me, Jenna Sullivan uh, was the star. She had 17 kills and six ace blocks in that match. Tuesday saw the Bronco uh, girls swimming and diving team uh, play host to the uh, Chisholm uh, Blue Streaks. The Broncos uh, moved a lot of people around. It was a meet that uh, I don't want to sound uh, whatever about it, but they, they knew they were going to win. It was uh, Chisholm, I think, had only 18 girls there to swim, so it was one of those meets where uh, people moved themselves around, and uh, the, the, the final score was never in, in doubt, or the outcome, excuse me, was never in doubt. But it was a great day overall. Uh, 11 first places, if you count everything uh, quote-unquote correctly, because uh, the Broncos did exhibition some of the uh, final races. But the 200-meter, uh, 200-yard, uh, excuse me, medley relay of Meisner, Herzig, Sari, and Stone took first place. Amelia Stewart took first in the 200 free. <coughs> Claire Herzig first in the 200 IM. Emma Erickson first in the 50-yard. Alyssa Mathis took first in the diving. Caroline Stone first in the 100 butterfly. First place for Lindsay Lucy in the 500. Uh, the uh, first place for uh, Anna Early, Stone, Stewart, and Herzig in the 200 free relay. Emma Meiser took first in the 100-yard backstroke. 
Uh, Carol Ann Stone, another first place in the 100 breaststroke. And then early, sorry, Meisner and Herzig all took first place uh, in the 400 free relay. It was just a dominant day for the Broncos. They swam, I thought, very, very well. The Viking volleyball team had to go five sets uh, for the uh, third consecutive match on Tuesday. They defeated Northeast Range three sets to two, 25-23, 17-25, 17-25. So they had to rally back 25-14 and 15-13 in the fifth. Emily Franz, nine kills and two blocks. Kaylee Kennedy, seven kills. Anna Imhoff, 25 digs, and uh, Kylie Clark, three ace serves. On Wednesday, the Voyager volleyball team down Fond du Lac in dominating fashion, 25-7, 25-6, 25-6. Maddie Filippiak, eight kills, six ace serves in the quick match uh, on Wednesday. Bronco cross country team was in Eveleth on uh, Thursday. Lexi Erickson took first place, Avery Savone in 24th, uh, and for the uh, boys, Jake Erickson took 12th, John Coleman 15th, Justin Besh 21st, Rocco Laughlin 23rd, and Hunter Wilson took 26th. The Bronco boys team took third place overall. Ely took first place with just 29 as a score. Uh, phenomenal. I, I just was shocked. And of course, we talked about the on uh, Thursday, the Bronco volleyball team lost in four sets to Virginia. Bailey Millett got six kills, two ways blocks. Jenna Sullivan, nine kills. Claire Palm, a couple eight serves on that uh, jump serving that she's doing. Emma Gilbert had 11 kills and four ace blocks, and Lauren Radio had 52 digs. Also, the little for Big Falls Vikings volleyball team, they were in action. They lost in three sets to Northwoods, 31-29, 25-11, 25-23. Kaylee Kennedy led the way with nine kills. Sydney went had 20 set assists. The Bronco football team lost last night by a final score of 49-7 to two harbors, and the little for Big Falls Vikings volleyball, or excuse me, football team, lost by a final score of 57 to 8. What's going on again today? The Bronco uh, swimming and diving team are down in Hibbing for a meet today. The diving started at 9.15. The swimming goes on at 1 o'clock. Again, if you've got meet, the Meet Mobile app, you can follow along with all the results there. I also will be uh, posting updates on the Bronco Facebook page as I have an opportunity. The Viking volleyball team, they are in Crosby Arrington for a meet that uh, already started, uh, or for a tournament, excuse me, that started at 9 a.m. The Rainy River volleyball team, big matchup against Itasca at noon today. Uh, uh, good battle there between two teams that, uh, according to Coach Mel Milliburn, are very evenly matched. So it'll be very interesting to see how that match goes at Itasca. The Rainy River baseball team is on their way to Western Minnesota. They're going to Crookston play a couple of fall scrimmages as they will be facing Crookston and Northland Community College. What's coming up this week? Uh, no action on uh, Monday, Tuesday. Hugely busy day. The cross country teams are at Bagley at 4 o'clock. The Bronco girls swimming and diving team has a full meet at 4.30 against Virginia and both area volleyball teams in action as the Broncos host Lake of the Woods in Little Fort Big Falls travels to Hill City. The Rainy River volleyball team travels to Ely and face Vermillion on Wednesday, Thursday. The battle of uh, the two area volleyball teams, the Broncos and the uh, Little Fort Big Falls, will have it for you on K104 and KSDMRadio.com. That match is set to start at 7 o'clock. I should mention, i got to go backwards. The uh, game against Lake of the Woods on Tuesday has a 7.30 start time for the varsity. Push everything back 30 minutes. I'm not exactly sure why. I think maybe due to the swim meet. Um, that's, a, that's only a guess on my part, but 30 minutes later for the match on Tuesday. The girls swimming and diving have their second meet of the week as they travel to face Masabi East, their toughest and most uh, interesting competition. Next Friday, I already mentioned the Broncos traveling to Eveleth to uh, take on the Golden Bears. The Viking football team, they're on the road at Big Fork, and the Rainy River volleyball team starts a two-day tournament out at the North Dakota School of Science uh, out in North Dakota. Also, next Saturday, the girls' Broncos swimming and diving team has an invite that starts at 9 a.m. with the uh, diving 11 for the... Uh, for the swimming in the uh, Little Fort Big, Big Falls Vikings volleyball team, second Saturday in a row that they will have a tournament. They will be at Virginia. Wow, I looked down at the clock. we got to get out of the way here. It's uh, almost the 10 o'clock hour. We want to get out of the way for the news and everything else. Again, thanks to uh, my guest. Thanks to everybody at Hardy's here for taking care of my guest. Uh, remember, you can uh, now watch the uh, Coach's Corner on Tape Delay on KCC TV. So uh, you can watch along there and uh, watch the replay. Or if you don't aren't around on Saturday mornings and you can't get on the Internet, now you can watch it on replay on uh, KCC TV Channel 7 on the uh, local cable uh, access channel. Thanks to Brandon back at the station. Thanks to all our sponsors for allowing us to do this every Saturday morning. But most of all, thank you for listening to Coach's Corner, live from parties on K104 and online at KSDMRadio.com.